Hello. In the earlier sessions, we have gone through this topic of balancing or we have seen how to take care of the unbalances in the system which are creating disturbances while running or functioning of that system. So, we have seen uh, or we know that any mechanical system is comprised of say if we say an example of a simple slider crank mechanism if we see now here we can see that there is this crank which is having a pure rotary motion so this is a pure rotary motion or rotation and this slider it is having a clear pure linear motion or I can say it is a reciprocating motion. Now, we have taken care of this element which is purely rotating we have seen and we can perfectly take care of the unbalance due to these rotating masses uh, which is in the form of a centrifugal force. So, we can counter it with the help of placing a mass in that system in required planes or maybe we can simply rearrange the masses in that system so that together whatever resultant forces are coming out to be they are nullified or they are cancelling each other and thus the system is getting balanced. Now, let us talk about this component which is reciprocating. Now, this body or the slider is having a linear motion say for at this instant when say this is rotating with some angular velocity omega fine. So, when this is turning counterclockwise, so at this instant this slider will be moving towards the center of rotation or towards the center of rotation of the crank. So, when this is moving in this direction, then of course, one inertia force will be acting exactly opposite to it. Now, what happens is this is that inertia force which is acting along the line of the stroke. So, we are calling this as the line of the stroke which are creating the unbalance in the system or uh, so at times these becomes very disturbing when they are rotating at quite high speed. So, then what is this magnitude of this slider in that case then we can say that it will be the mass into its acceleration. So, now if I know what is the acceleration of this slider I can get the magnitude of this inertia force which will be uh, included getting included in the system when uh, the system is running. So, when it is not running of course, this force is not in the picture, but the moment when this is uh, start working. So, this slider with mass m when it starts moving. So, I am getting an inertia force of this magnitude induced or included in the system. So, which is disturbing. So, I have to take care of that. So, then what is the magnitude of this? So, uh, during kinematics we have studied for a uh, slider clank crank mechanism what will be the acceleration just to uh, <coughs> remind you. So, if we see we can uh, if we we determine the displacement. So, at this condition when the crank and the connecting rod they are at the straight line condition and let us say this crank has turned by some angle theta where say when this is the line of the stroke. So, we are saying this angle is theta and this angle is phi and when it is moving to this condition of theta. So, I can say this is the displacement x. So, we can find out this displacement x wherein I can say 
where the length of the connecting rod is L and the radius of the crank is say R. So, I can say this is equal to R plus L minus then we can say now if I see this situation if we use this geometry. So, we can say now this angle this length if I name this as AB. So, I can say x is this total minus this length is x. So, this length is say this this plus this. So, it is say this is L this is R. So, L cos theta and this is so it is R cos theta plus L cos phi. So, that is how we get the displacement. I am not getting into the derivation of this. So, dx by dt we get the velocity of the sliding body and when we differentiate we get the acceleration of the slider. So, we are uh, uh, using various uh, trigonometric relations then expanding uh, through binomial uh, expansion we are doing the equation. So, we are ultimately getting the expression for uh, acceleration. So, I will directly come into the acceleration part. So, acceleration the magnitude of this acceleration is given by r omega square where r is the radius of rotation into cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n where this n this n is L by R ratio. This is L by R ratio or this N is also expressed as lambda which is 1 upon N or I can say it will be R by L. So, this same expression I can say that this is A acceleration is cos theta plus lambda cos 2 theta as the acceleration where n is you can see n is the ratio L by R where L is the length of the connecting rod and R is the crank radius. So, if this L is too large if this L is too large then the value of n will be large. So, this component can be smaller or if L is very large then lambda value is very small. So, you can see this is how the so these two components are the primary component and the secondary component. So, we are talking about the force. So, then what will be this inertia force due to this reciprocating mass is. <coughs> so, this inertia force is equal to mass into the acceleration just now we have seen what is the expression for acceleration. So, it will be m r omega square cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n or I can expand this and write it this way m r omega square cos theta plus m r omega square cos 2 theta by n. So, we are getting for this inertia force which is the unbalance in the system this magnitude, magnitude comes out to be these two values where we are calling this as the primary component of unbalance. This is the primary component and this is the secondary component secondary component of unbalance in the system. Right. So, you can see the occurrence this is twice of theta and theta is omega t. So, the frequency of the secondary component is twice that of the primary, uh, primary component and obviously for very small values of 
speed angular rotation of the crank <coughs> this will be a quite uh, smaller values or it will not be affecting or this component of the secondary component of the unbalance will not be affecting in the uh, affecting the system because its magnitude compared to this value will be quite small right so this secondary component of the unbalance comes into the picture or comes into the system or becomes dominant when the speeds are very high so when we get into a very high speed range conditions of the system then only this secondary component uh, becomes uh, or shows its effect in the system so now the situation is that we have to handle so when we are going for balancing so we are trying to balance the first the primary component of the unbalance in the system and now let us see how we are uh, balancing the this system so now we will try and understand balancing of uh, balancing of reciprocating masses so we we'll, so we have understood how this inertia force is coming into the system so let's go back to or so this is our system so say this is turning by an angular velocity omega and at this instant it is turned by or the crank position is uh, theta so this is the length l and this is the length r now we are focusing purely on the reciprocating mass so forget about all the masses right now in the system because there is a rotating uh, mass in the system it will be having its own individual unbalance effect in the system we are not thinking about it right now then there is this connecting rod which is a floating link which is having linear as well as rotary motion even right now we are not bothered or right now we are not thinking about the l in this or the connecting rod in this system what we are simply <coughs> thinking about is this mass which is the reciprocating mass having say m, m mass which is reciprocating in this system right and this is creating or this is generating an inertia force which is <coughs> coming into the system along the line of the stroke so when the body is moving in this direction the inertia force is acting in the opposite direction and when the slider is moving away from it at that time this force is acting towards the center of rotation so this inertia force ultimately uh, comes to this uh, uh, crank uh, position so where we are <coughs> or this experiences a vibration maybe or displacement in this fashion so this force along the line of the action this is also called as the shaking force right so this shaking force is generated due to this inertia force so when this as we have seen when this body right now we are turning it counter clockwise so at this instant the body is moving in this direction or towards the left so the inertia force which is acting this is acting to the right which is this we have seen right and magnitude of this inertia force as an unbalance so right now it is creating that unbalance we have seen is m r omega square cos theta which is the primary component and right now we are dealing with only the primary component of unbalance so assuming or the situation is such the secondary component is negligible it is not affecting the system so in most of the system or with lower speed lower or moderate speed conditions only the uh, primary component of unbalance is dominant in the system 
so we have to take care of this and this is what is the magnitude of this force which is m r omega square cos theta now what i can do <coughs> as we as in case of the uh, as in case of uh, uh, balancing of rotating masses we have seen that we have tried to or we have found out the unbalanced force in case of uh, rotary balancing so there is a mass which is rotating about this shaft so what we did we simply placed a mass on the same shaft right so we placed some balancing mass at some balancing radius so when it rotated so this is the centrifugal force so this is the centrifugal force due to the disturbing mass this is the centrifugal force due to the balancing mass and they compensated each other so these forces they simply cancelled out each other so if i think in that direction like if it is so then i have to put a mass which is reciprocating right same in this fashion so i can put that mass somewhere attached to the same shaft so maybe kind of an another crank and um, slider arrangement i need to prepare so that becomes uh, uh, what you can say for a given system so it will be then a single double slider mechanism right so what here i want is i want to balance the existing system so for that we apply again the same fundamental in a way uh, what we are doing is we are uh, balancing this system again this is a reciprocating unbalance in the system but we are balancing this linear or reciprocating unbalance of the system with the help of a rotating mass only now how we are doing it so as if then so this is the crank we can see which is turning at an angular velocity omega so what uh, and this mass if you see the magnitude is um, dependent on or function of these two r as well as omega the r that means the crank radius and the crank speed crank velocity so this magnitude is function of or this inertia force is function of these two values so that means on the same crank which is turning at omega if i place a mass so now i am involving a mass i am involving a mass right opposite to the crank pin right uh, which or as if i am extending the crank which is pivoted here right and extend to the length let us say r so this is turning at omega right so see function of r and omega and we have seen that centrifugal force that is also function of the radius of rotation and the velocity so i what i do is i just place a mass with on the same shaft which is turning at omega and at r radius exactly opposite to this crank pin so what i did is i placed this mass and i right now let us say i place this same mass in, in the system so in this system when it is functioning so the centrifugal force due to this mass centrifugal force due to this mass it will be acting radially outward in this direction so what i did i placed the same mass m which is reciprocating so magnitude of same mass i have placed and the crank pin so when this so this is the centrifugal force and it will be having the magnitude m r omega square this will be having the magnitude m r omega square now if i see at this instant the components of this force so you can see this so this is the right now let us say the horizontal component as we have kept the system horizontal and this is the vertical component right so if this is theta so that means this angle is also theta so i can say that this horizontal component this horizontal component it will have a magnitude m r omega square cos theta and this component will be this is m r omega square 
sin theta. So now if you see this system, so this inertia force he is acting in this direction which is the unbalance disturbing at this instant. So what we did, we placed a balancing mass, so equal to the mass of the reciprocating mass right and at a radius on the same shaft of the crank which is at exactly opposite sense then only I will get this component opposite to this component right. So I get now if you see in the horizontal direction now if you compare and see so this horizontal component and the inertia force now having the same magnitude they are cancelling out each other right. So the horizontal component and the inertia force they are cancelling out each other. So now in this case then there will be no shaking force in this system. But for balancing when we have put this balancing mass here when we have included this in the system though it is taking care of the unbalance of the shaking force or the force which is acting along the line of the stroke but there is inclusion of another force which is in the vertical direction. So this force and now when this is rotating so at times it will be acting downwards at time it will be acting upwards. So this force so what we have seen here is so we have this inner shear force which is the unbalance in the system. So we have determined or we have placed a mass in such a fashion that there is this horizontal component which is m r omega square cos theta. So these two are cancelling out each other. Now this and the vertical which will be m r omega square sin theta. So you can see that this horizontal and vertical these are due to these forces are coming into the system due to the balancing masses right. The balancing mass what we have included in the system and this is the this is the unbalance due to reciprocating mass. Right. So this this horizontal and this is taken care of but due to inclusion of this there is inclusion of this unbalance we have taken care of one, one unbalance which is along the line of the stroke but due to this there is another unbalance in the system which is got involved and this is called as the so this force this force is which is acting perpendicular to the line of the stroke is called as the jumping force right and this is called as the shaking force. So though we have taken care of the shaking force unbalance in the system the jumping force has uh, got involved in the system when we have place. So now what is to be done then? So if this is the situation and this is the probably right now only way um, by which I can balance the system then I have to come to a state of compromise wherein uh, I will try to uh, have this shaking force at a manageable range where I can manage it or can be controlled um, very easily. So instead of putting this balancing mass to be same as that what we did here is we put this balancing mass equal to the reciprocating mass and we uh, try to understand. So we have seen if this mass is greater than though the shaking force is taken care of the jumping force that magnitude will be increasing. So here then we compromise come to a compromising situation wherein we let uh, our system 
have shaking force in the system but that that is to be in some manage manageable magnitude so instead of putting this mass as simply same as that of reciprocating mass so we uh, place or we put a mass this ratio we are calling it as c so we are placing c times m mass as the balancing mass as the balancing mass so or what i can say is this c is a fraction fraction of the reciprocating mass right instead of complete m mass so some fraction so maybe and this c some fraction of mass considered so this c uh, uh, it varies from say 2/5 to 3/5 or 3/4 value uh, uh, ratio um, that we'll see so uh, and usually it is that means somewhere from 40% uh, or or 80% to 33% of um, the reciprocating mass this c value is considered so instead of completely balancing the reciprocating mass we are uh, balancing a portion of this reciprocating mass so that means uh, in our system we are not completely balancing a reciprocating system so there will be a residual unbalance in the system always and that we try to keep in the manageable range now let's see what will be the uh, unbalance always remaining in the system so let us try to understand that so we have seen that <coughs> in we cannot completely balance uh, a reciprocating system we have seen uh, the limitations what we are experiencing because uh, the balancing mass which i have to put it has to be uh, a, a, a rotating mass so with the we are balancing a reciprocating mass with the help of a rotating mass so we extended the crank in the other side so if you see if you have ever seen the crank of any vehicle you will see that actually it looks something like this so this is the crank this is the say connecting rod and which is attached to the so that is how this is how somewhat it looks so this is the mass <clears throat> the balancing mass which is placed to balance this so that is how the cranks are made right so we will try to see this how the unbalance is remaining in the system right so we have extended the crank and we have placed a balancing mass here so this is the balancing mass mb and this is the reciprocating mass which we are trying to manage here and here we will say that this balancing mass is equal to c times m of course the value of c is less than 1 always so i am balancing so this mass is having a magnitude of c times m and this c is always less than 1 so we are not always completely balancing this mass so we are balancing a portion of this mass so when this is rotating say at angular velocity omega and this is the crank radius so that means the inertia force will be in this direction which is the unbalance right now let us say this is the inertia force which will be acting in this direction so just now we have seen so this is c times m r omega square cos theta so it will be having these two components the two components is this horizontal and this as so let us say this is the balancing 
mass due to uh, so force due to this balancing mass which is vertical and this is the force due to balancing mass which is horizontal so let's see so the magnitude of this inertia force will be m r omega square cos theta this is in the horizontal direction which is the shaking force right then when we place this mass balancing mass in the system so we will get we will be getting these two components where this is the this is of this force in the horizontal component due to the balancing mass is will be mb where mb is c times m r omega square cos theta again which is in the horizontal direction and the other force due to the balancing mass in the vertical direction is c times m r omega square sin theta so this is vertical so these two are due to the balancing mass right and this is due to the reciprocating mass so here in this case we can see that <coughs> when this mass is not equal to the reciprocating mass of course then the magnitude of these two values will be different and of course when c is less than 1 that means uh, this component what we are getting this component will be certainly less than this value so then what will be the unbalanced force unbalanced force remaining in the horizontal direction so this will be of course the inertia force these are the two in the horizontal direction minus this the force due to balancing mass in the horizontal direction so that means this will be equal to this is m r omega square cos theta minus c times m r omega square cos theta that means i can say it is so i can take this m r omega square common so 1 minus c times m r omega square cos theta so this is the unbalance this is the unbalance always remaining unbalanced force remaining in the system which is the shaking force this is the shaking force this will be the residual unbalance in the system and what will be the vertical the vertical will be <coughs> unbalanced due to vertical uh, in the vertical direction it will be now instead of m times uh, uh, r omega square sin theta now it will be c times m r omega square sin theta so this will be the unbalanced force newtons which is the jumping force which is remaining in the system so by considering by compromising to bring it this balancing mass magnitude uh, uh, into a lesser value so we have reduced the magnitude of the vertical unbalanced force as well as we instead of completely balancing the shaking force or the horizontal force we are partially balancing it so amount of this shaking force is remaining in the system so this total unbalance then we can find out so we know these are the two components so this will be the residual unbalance in the system <coughs> so that is how we see so <coughs> looking into Uh, this reciprocating masses then what exactly we are doing is uh, so we can understand that uh, this unbalance will be remaining in the system as far as the reciprocating balancing of the reciprocating mass is uh, concerned so we have seen this as considering only one uh, slider crank arrangement 
now there will be uh, inclusion of number of slider of uh, slider crank arrangements in a system so then we can see how so individually we can find out what are the unbalance and we then we can take care of uh, or together we can take care of uh, finding out a solution to uh, uh, take care of the unbalance in the system so that's all in this session